let's say it's 8,603, 8,603, and we're going to divide this number by five. Remember, I've been telling you, the first thing you do always is you take a look at the first number. So say here it is an eight, five times one is five. Five times two is 10, 10 is two, uh, too large. So we back up and say, all right, then five times one is five. Now notice right there, that's a, that's a difference from the last lesson. In the last lesson, the first number here was always chosen to be less than what's on the outside. So because of that, we had to say, well, we couldn't go into this. Now we have to consider the first two digits. That was only because the first digit was so small that we couldn't divide into it. But here in these problems, the first number will be large enough so that we can divide into it. And because of that, we have to go through this whole process one extra time. So in the last lesson, all of the answers, the numbers on the top, all the numbers on the top was three digits plus a remainder for every problem we did, three digits plus a remainder. Here you can see we're already gonna have four digits. So all of these problems will be as an answer four digits plus a remainder, and that's why we broke it up this way to give you practice with small numbers. Now we get into larger numbers. So five times one is five, so we multiply, and we write it directly under the eight here and subtract. What is eight minus five? Well, go down, seven, six, five, four, three. Put a three there. Now after we subtract, the next thing is always to grab the next digit, bring it down. Now we have a 36. So five times something is 35. We know that five times seven is 30. Uh, five. I think I may have misspoke earlier. Uh, we're trying to see five times something to get as close as we can get to 36 as we can. Five times seven is 35, but five times eight is 40. That's too high. So we back up to five times seven, which is 35. Write it down here and subtract, and 36 minus 35 is just a one. After we subtract, we grab the next digit, which is this one, and bring it all the way down here, and now we have a 10. Five times something is 10. Well, we know what that is. Five times two is 10, so we multiply, and we get a 10 here and we subtract. 10 minus 10 is zero. After we subtract, we again grab the next digit, which we now have is a three. Drag it all the way down, now we have a three. Five times something is three, let's try one. Five times one is five, that's already too big. So back up to zero. Five times zero is zero. That's as close as we can get without going over. Five times zero is zero, subtract. We get an answer of three. After we subtract, try to grab the next digit, but there is no next digit. So this is our remainder. Double check it's less than five, and it is. So the remainder is three. So the answer is 1,720 with a remainder of three left over. Let me check, 1,720, remainder of three. So what this means is if I have 8,603 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and I'm gonna put them on five, you know, five cars to take to five different parties, then every one of these cars is going to have 1,720 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches divided evenly among those cars, but I'm going to have three sandwiches left that I can't distribute among five cars, so we just call it a remainder. So you see why these problems are a little longer. Because we can divide into the first digit, we have to come down and go through the process, drag, go through the process, drag, so we have one extra cycle through here uh, to get the answer, and because of that, the answer is four digits plus a remainder. So same process, just a little bit longer, just because the number under here is a larger number compared to before. All right, so we're gonna get some practice dividing four digits, which we call larger numbers. Let's take a look at the next one. Uh, what about 9,061? And let's divide that by eight. Let's say we have 9,061 potatoes and eight baskets. We wanna see how many go in every basket. Look at the first digit, eight times one is eight. Eight times two is 16, so that's too big. But notice that we are allowed to go into the first digit, whereas in, again, the previous section, we always had a zero there. We never went divided into the first digit because it was always too small. But here, this digit's bigger than eight, so we can divide into it. And so we say eight times one is eight and subtract. Nine minus eight is one. After we subtract, grab the next digit, which is a zero. Now we have a 10. Eight times something is 10. Well, we have eight times one is eight. Eight times two is 16. That's too big. So we go up and say eight times one again is eight. Now, what is 10 minus eight? You can borrow if you want, or you can just start with eight and count up. Start with eight, nine, 10. There's only two differences, uh, two numbers in between these two. And of course, you could start with eight and go down. I'm start go with 10 and go down by eight if you'd like. Either way, you're gonna get a two. So after you subtract, you grab the next digit. In this case, it's a six, and now you have 26. So we know that eight times three is 24, 
And we know that eight times four is 32, but that's too big. So we go back to eight times three, and that is then 24, and now we subtract. Six minus four is five, four, three, two. Six minus four is two, two minus two, zero. After we subtract, we go up and grab the next digit, which is a one, and now we have a 21. So eight times two is 16, eight times three is 24. That's too big, so go back to eight times two, multiply to get 16, and let's subtract. Again, I could borrow here, make this 11, make this a one, but it's easier to start at 16 and count up to 21. Start at 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. There's five numbers that exist between these two, and so we put a five. If you do it the other way, Borrow and make this an 11, that'll become a one. And 11 minus six, if you do that on your fingers or just think about it, you'll get 11 minus six is five. One minus one would be zero, so you get the same thing. After you subtract, grab the next digit. There is no next digit. Check the remainder is less than this, and it is, so you have a remainder five. So just write the answer as 1,132 remainder five. So I can't remember what I said, uh, if this was potatoes or something else, but if we had uh, 9,061 potatoes and put them into eight different baskets, every basket would have 1,132 potatoes, but I would have five left over that I couldn't distribute evenly, so we would just call it a remainder. So you see, it took a long time to do just two problems. We have quite a few more. So if you need to pause a few times, take a break, you know, that's fine. These problems just take longer but that's okay. The way you get good at it is just by seeing it a bunch and also doing it a bunch. So we're going to get that practice. Problem number three, let's take a look at 8,805 and we're gonna divide that by three. All right, first digit. Three times one is three. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine, that's too big. So we go back to three times two and multiply and we get six. Eight minus six is seven, six, five, four, three, two. Eight minus six is two. After we subtract, grab the next digit, bring it down. We have now a 28 here. So three times nine is 27, and three times 10 is 30, so that's too big. So we go back to nine and say three times nine, multiply, get 27, subtract. 28 minus 27 is one. After we subtract, grab the next digit, bring it down, it's a zero, we have a 10. Three times three is nine. Three times four is 12. That's too big, so it has to be three times three, which would be nine. What is 10 minus nine? It's just one left over, so you have a one here. After you subtract, grab the next digit, which is this one right here, and now you have a 15. Three times something is 15, that has to be a five. Three times five is 15. Subtract, get a zero. After you subtract, grab the next digit, but there is no next digit, so the remainder is just a zero, which is at the bottom. So I'll just write the answer here is 2,935. 2,935. So if I take 8,805 bumblebees and put them into three different cages, I'm going to have 2,935 of those guys in every cage, and it'll be perfectly even with no leftovers, no remainders. Everything is evenly distributed. So it goes in a, a, a exactly an even number of times. All right, problem number four. Let's take a look. 7,176, and we want to divide that by four. All right, first digit. Four times one is four. Four times two is eight. That's too big. So we go back to four times one. Multiply, and we get a four. Seven, let's go down. Six, five, four, three. So seven minus four is three. And after we subtract, grab the next digit, bring it down. Now you have a 31. So four times seven is 28, and four times eight is 32. That's too big, so it has to be four times seven. Multiply four times seven, get 28, and subtract. To do the column subtraction, you'd have to borrow here, but that's ugly and cumbersome, so let's just start at 28 and count up to 31. Start at 28, 29, 30, 31. And there's three numbers that live between here, so the difference there is three. If you did borrow and make it 11, and make that a two, and 11, go down by eight, and do that on your fingers, you'll get exactly the same thing of a three, but we don't like cluttering this up uh, as much as we can. So we've subtracted, we got a three. Next, grab the next digit, which is a seven. Now you have a 37. Four times eight is 32. Four times nine is 36. Four times 10 is 40. That's too big. So it has to be four times nine. Multiply, get a 36, and 37 minus 36 is one. 
After you subtract, grab the next number, which is a six. Now you have a 16. Four times something is 16, has to be four. Four times four is 16. So then you subtract and get a zero. After you subtract, grab the next digit, but there is no next digit, so we just say the remainder is zero. So the answer to this is exactly 1,794, and there's nothing left it over, over at all, just like in the last problem. All right, we've only done four problems, and I think you'd agree that these problems take time, and they do. So it's very important to set your paper up neatly, draw your arrows. Notice how I always draw my arrows so I know what I'm dropping down. I never forget. If you have everything misaligned, it's very hard to do these. That's why I'm showing you step by step how to do it. All right, next problem. 5,237, and we want to divide that by four. We want to divide that by four. All right, going into the first number, four times one is four. Four times two is eight, that's too big. So we go back to four times one, and that's equal to four. Now we subtract. Five minus four is one. After we subtract, we grab the next digit, bring it down, and now we have a 12. All right, four times something is 12. Four times three is exactly equal to 12, so we multiply it, get a 12, subtract. 12 minus 12 is zero. After we subtract, grab the next digit, which is then a three. Four times one is four, that's already too big. So we have to go back to zero. Four times zero is zero. That's less than three, so that's actually the answer. And three minus zero is three. After we subtract, grab the next digit, which is now a seven, and now down here you have a 37. So four times eight is 32, and four times nine is 36, and four times 10 is 40. That's too big, so you go back to four times nine, multiply, which is 36, subtract. 37 minus 36 is one. After you subtract, grab the next number, but there is no next number, so it's a remainder of one. So we just write it as 1,309 with a remainder of one. 1,309 remainder of one. So if I had 5,237 pancakes, and I wanted to put them on four plates evenly, every plate would have a stack of 1,309 pancakes tall, but I would have one pancake left over I couldn't do much with because everything was even and uh, distributed evenly and I have one left over. So that would be a lot of pancakes, I give you that. And you would need an awful lot of syrup, syrup to, or syrup and butter to even eat those pancakes. But, you know, that's another problem. All right, we're at the halfway mark. Take a look at the next problem. What about 7,258? And we want to divide that by two. 7,258 divided by two. And we look, look at the first digit. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. Two times four is eight, but that's too big. So we back up to two times three. Two times three is six, subtract. Seven minus six is one. After we subtract, grab the next digit and bring it down. Now you have 12. So two times something is 12 and that has to be six. Two times six is exactly 12. So now we subtract and we get a zero. After we subtract, grab the next digit, bring it down, which is a five. All right, after we bring our five down, we have a five here. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. So actually, we have to back up for a two to be here. Two times two is then four, and then we subtract. Five minus four is one, and after we get that subtraction, we grab the next digit, which is an eight, and so we have an 18. Two times something is 18. And we know exactly that it has to be nine. Two times nine is 18 exactly. So we subtract and we get a zero and we try to grab the next digit, which isn't there. So we don't have anything else to do. We have a remainder of zero. So, so the final answer then is 3,629 and we don't have to write the remainder zero. And so, uh, unless you want to. So for instance, if we had 7,258 pancakes and two plates to put them on, then every plate would have a stack 3,629 pancakes tall, and every stack would be exactly the same. There would be no leftovers, no remainder. That's what that means there. We only have uh, four problems left. This is our last board. And let's take a look at this one. Let's say we have, uh, let's go scoot over here a little bit, 5,517, and we want to divide that by five. 5,517, we're going to divide it by five. First digit, five times one is five. That's an exact match, so we're gonna put a one here and say five times one is five and subtract, five minus five is zero. 
After we subtract, grab the next digit, which again is a five. Now five times something is five, it again has to be a one. Five times one is five, write it down, and then subtract, get again a zero. After you subtract, grab the next digit, which is a one, comes down here. Now five times one is five, that's already too big, so you have to back up to a zero. Five times zero is actually smaller than this, you get a zero here, uh, there. And then one minus zero is one. After you subtract, grab the next digit, which is a seven, now you have 17. We know that five times three is 15, and five times four is 20, so that's too big. So it has to be five times three is 15. Subtract, five going down, or seven going down, six, five, four, three, two. So seven minus five is two. One minus one is zero, and we don't have any more digits to drag down, so it's gonna be a rem remainder of two. So we just say it's 1,103 with a remainder of two. Let me double check, 1,103, remainder of two. So if I had, you know, 5,517 rocks and I had five, you know, boxes to put them in, every box would have 1,103 rocks evenly distributed, but then I'd have two rocks left over, I couldn't really do much with them, so I would just say it's a remainder. All right, only three problems left. Let's take a look at the following problem. What about 9,131, and I wanna divide that by so 9,131 of whatever, and I'm gonna put it into two piles. How many piles, or how many am I gonna have in each pile? Two times two is four. Two times three is six. Two times four is eight. And two times five is 10, that's too far. So it has to be two times four. That's gonna give you eight. And then nine minus eight is one. And after you subtract, you always grab the next digit, bring down the one, and now you have 11. So two, times five is 10, and two times six is 12. That's too far, so it has to be two times five, which would be 10. Subtract 11 minus 10, you'll get a one. After you subtract, grab the next digit, which is a three, and now you have a 13. So we know that two times six is 12, and two times seven is 14, that's too far. So it has to be two times six, that has to be a 12. Subtract 13 minus 12, and you get a one. After you subtract and get a one, you grab the next digit, bring it down, and again, you have an 11 down here. We already had one of those before. Two times five is 10, and two times six is 12. That's too far, so it has to be two times five, which will be a 10. Subtract 11 minus 10, and you'll get a one. After you subtract, grab the next digit, but there is no next digit, so the remainder is just a one, right? So the answer here is 4,565 with the remainder of one. I'll just leave it up at the top, and I'll circle this guy. 4,565 remainder of one. So. If I had 9,131 grains of sand, try to put them in two equal piles, I'll have 4,565 grains of sand in each pile, but then I'll have one grain of sand left over. I can't evenly distribute it, so it's a remainder. All right, only two more problems left. I know they're getting long. I'm sorry about that, but we just have to get our practice in. So let's take a look at 8,421, and we'll divide that by three. What do we have? First digit, three times two is six, but three times three is nine, that's too far. So we say then three times two is six. We multiply, get a six and subtract. Eight minus six going down, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Eight minus six is two. After we subtract, grab the next digit, now you have a 24. So three times something is 24. Actually, three times eight is 24, so we multiply, three times eight, get 24, subtract, and we get zero. 24 minus 24 is zero. After we subtract, grab the next digit, which is then a two. Now you have a two down here, but three times one is three, that's already too big, so you have to back up to zero. Three times zero is zero, that's smaller, and so two minus zero is two. Now, after you subtract, again, you grab the next digit, which is a one, and you have a 21. Three times something is 21, and that is a seven. Three times seven is exactly 21. So we subtract, get a zero, grab the next digit, which is, you know, there is no other digit, so we just say the answer is 2,807, remainder zero. So we could just say the answer is 2,807. We don't need to really put the remainder zero unless we want to. Uh, so if you had 8,000, 421 grains of sand and you put it into three equal piles, every grain of sand would have this many, uh, or every pile would have this many grains of sand and there would be no leftovers, no remainder. All right, I know it's been a long road, but we have one more problem. Let's see 
Where is it gonna be the best to fit that in? Let's just do it right here. Last problem. Let's take a look at 4,783 and we'll divide that by four. So we'll go into the first digit, we have a four. Four times one is four, so we'll put a one here and multiply four times one is four, subtract. Four minus four is zero, and after you get the zero, you subtract and you drag the next digit down, you have a seven down there. Four times one is four, and four times two is eight. That's too big, so it's gonna be four times one is four, and then you say now seven minus four. You go six, five, four, three. Seven minus four is three. After you subtract, grab the next digit, bring it down, and you have 38. So we know four times eight is 32, and we know that four times nine is 36. And we know that four times 10 is 40, that's too big. So it has to be four times nine, which is 36, and we subtract. Eight going down by six is seven, six, five, four, three, two. We get a two right here after we subtract, grab the next digit, which is then a three, which then we have down here a 23. 23. So four times, let's say five is 20, four times six is 24. So it can't be six, it has to be four times five. We multiply four times five, get 20, and we then subtract here, three minus zero is just three. After you subtract, you grab the next digit, but there is no next digit, so what you have here is a remainder, I'm gonna have to scribble it down here, remainder of three. So I'm gonna rewrite the answer. It's gonna be 1,195 with a remainder of three left over, 1,195, remainder of three. So that was 10 problems and it was a little painful. I, I get it, I understand. It is tough to do these problems. Uh, I could do one or two of them and you'd be like, oh, you probably kind of know what you're doing, but I wanna give you enough so that you have enough practice so that you know exactly what you're doing uh, because it's very important as we get to larger numbers that you understand the, the process and it doesn't seem confusing. The only way to do that is by solving problems. So I'd like you to work these. When you feel like you understand, follow me on to part two and we'll wrap up this concept. That will be the end of, this, of the road with this concept. We'll wrap up our practice of dividing four digit numbers. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.